So I think the different experience of Seclair starts as soon as you walk in the door. Typically people have a preconceived notion of what a psychiatric practice should look like and you know they will often think of people that are scary sitting in the waiting room and white coats and very stark walls, but that isn't the case at all here. I mean, it's more like a family approach and people walk in and feel comfortable and they tell me that again and again when I see new patients that they don't feel like they're coming here because they have a problem, but they're coming here because there are comfort and support and good care. Uh, that is true. As a psychiatrist for the past 25 plus years, I came to realize that um, when a person is diagnosed with a mood disorder or a psychiatric condition or a substance abuse disorder, it really is very difficult for the whole system of care. Um, and thus, there's a fear, there's an unknown, and there's a fear of losing the quality of life. Um, uh, and we, in our modern times, pay very little attention to psychiatric disorders. Uh, I realize that we have to kind of take a different approach, and an approach of understanding that a person who's coming in with a lot of fears needs to be heard, needs to be understood. And also, they oftentimes feel at the very low point in their life. Uh, when if you're depressed, you don't even feel like getting up and taking a shower, what we take for granted on an everyday basis. Uh, so we understand how difficult and traumatizing uh, and challenging these disorders can be. Uh, so we, we created an environment where we accept and understand and hear uh, their challenges uh, and, and understanding where they're at and meet them where they're at in their life uh, and help them work through and navigate through the difficulties of medical psychiatric barriers to, to which their quality of life is being affected. Uh, and and our, our results have been very rewarding. Uh, when people get well and re-empowered, they stay well. They're not in and out of the hospitals. Our readmission rates are very, very low, and our engagement and treatment is very high. Uh, so we are very, very uh, satisfied as clinician to offer the blend of care that works very well for people in their unique difficulties. No, and I totally agree with that. And we get to work with people individually and really get to know them. We don't trade people quite frequently unless it's by request. We really get to know them and hear them, like you mentioned. It's not just an in and out visit. They really get to say what they're feeling because that can mean the difference. Even if the medication is same as another practice, that extra step of like a provider or patient relationship can help people really flourish. Absolutely. I remember <clears throat> when I was a resident, uh, my attendings knew the families and the patients, uh, not only the person who was in treatment, but also their mothers and grandparents and their children. And they rarely had to actually read up a medical record because they knew the family. Mm -hmm. uh, and the modern healthcare system is so broken that you may be seeing a different doctor at a, at a different visit. And thus the continuity of care is not as consistent. And thus we have tried to foster the capacity to have more individualized, consistent care uh, over time, obviously, over the lifespan that we have. And we, we try to match people's needs consistently. And we also include the families, which is from what I'm hearing from a lot of patients, kind of rare in a lot of other places. They might say, okay, you can go see a family therapist to have the family involved versus even in the psychiatric. Mm -hmm. And we often bring people in to help learn to support their, their family member that's struggling or help that family me member better, you know, unify with their unit of support system, so because each person is grounded and rooted in their family system and families often don't know how to support and what to do and what not to do. Uh, so we give them techniques, knowledges and practices that they can be better uh, suited for their needs of their loved ones. Almost like doing a CPR for somebody with a heart problem. Mm -hmm. So we teach people psychiatric CPRs. Yeah, exactly. And advanced cardiac life support if needed. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and I think to sum it all up is we really do pay attention to what our patients and our patient population needs and try to enhance the practice to offer those things. And we love doing it. Mm -hmm.